Hello and welcome back to the Sunday special episode of the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. So good back. Good. Look at I flubbed. Because I was like the, looking at the camera. Got the lights on you. The lights, yeah. the, they shine hot yeah. in this now TV studio. We're on YouTube. Exactly. I was just notified of where the cameras in the studio are, <laughs> even though we've been recording in here for a year. And now I've been told to look at the camera. So I'm trying to look right. a little bit more. I'm not even sure if I'm looking at the right one. That's speaking directly to the audience. We're talking to them. And listen, we're, we're not forgetting about that a lot of you are podcast people now and you like listening to this on your hot person walk of sorts or you're listening on a road trip or wherever the gym or wherever you're listening. You can still continue to listen. Keep on listening. Keep on keeping on. But we are on YouTube now and we want you to get subscribed. We made a 10,000 subscriber promise. Yes. The minute we get to 10,000, we will have a video of us giving dating app profile makeovers. You can see them. You can feel them. You can hear us you know, roast with love, so to speak. And at 20 or 30, what do you say? 30,000 subscribers, Jared will jump out of a cake. Wearing the Marilyn Monroe dress, singing to you. Yes. You've heard it here first. Yes. Um, That's a promise. But you guys, we need you to get there. We need 30,000 subscribers to get to that level. So you got to hit that button, tell a friend. Get all your people involved. Um, I've already made six email accounts, too. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Doing my part. What? Jordana. (laughs) Abe. Abe. Look at the seven Jordanas. Jordana Abraham. Jordana Marinelli. (laughs) Jordana, you know. You've done this game before. You've gotten coupons from many a company. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think I'm playing paying full price for a caviar delivery? No, absolutely not. (laughs) Do not think so. So listen, people, keep on subscribing, telling your friends. We love a Sunday special. It's Sunday. You're sitting there. The the fall is approaching. It is dating season, I would say. This is meet people, date people season. This is when it happens. Sunday special. Uh, Sundays are actually great dating days in the fall because you have football Sunday. Right, right. Go to a bar. Lots of guys there. Great way to meet people. Great way to be out and have an excuse to be out. Um, I'm like, I mean, I don't. They don't sponsor the show. Maybe we should bring them on as a sponsor. I'm a, I'm a better. I bet on these games. So like, I I place a bet. I got a little skin in the game. I can go to the bar, keep an eye on something where I have an investment and a monetary. You know, I'm yeah. telling the ladies this could be if if you want to make football fun. Bet Get a, a gambling bit. addiction. Yes. Right. No, it's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't like sports at all, but on, uh, the one game I watch is the Super Bowl, and mm-hmm. I always put a little money. Even, you know, you put down $20, you're invested. Well, that's, I care. That is the point. Uh, uh, I have an upside. You are making, uh, you're speaking to my soul because these uh, d- betting apps, you can like do like 10 bucks. And these are legal, right? They're legal. Okay. They're legal. New York City, New, yeah. New York State. I'm I'm on one of them, so I, I I'll wait until they start paying me to say it. Okay. But you you can sign up for these things. They give you like fifty dollars of like you know fake money. Okay. That you have to bet if you put in a certain amount, and then you can just play. You're there. You're in on the game, and you can. And you I'm care. Saying, this yeah. is, you you care a little more than you cared before, and and I like I sit at the bar, and I'll hang with my best friend the phone. Two of you, just two of me. Up. I do you have a sports bar that you like going to? Do you have a New York City sports bar that you go? I when I um I haven't been there in a bit. I think probably since pre pandemic. But I used to love Bounce. Bounce had a moment. Oh yeah, that is our generation. <laughs> bounce. There was Bounce Deuce. Do you remember Bounce, bounce Deuce? Deuce? There was a, a Bounce was a big Penn State bar at a certain point. Really? Oh, that makes Bounce sense. Bounce really did a good job combining the party with the game. At, I don't know. Are they still open? I'm pretty sure they are. They also have a Montauk place, the Bounce Beach really? Club, which is, used to be the Sloppy Tuna, if you know, you know. I know the Sloppy Tuna. They took over the Sloppy Tuna. The Sloppy Tuma. Tu- tuma. The Sloppy <laughs> Tuna is no more. Now it is Bounce, <laughs> Bounce Beach Club. I don't know why Great. I can't speak today. <laughs> <laughs> Great location. Yes. Great location, wow. and the one in New York City is in Flatiron. It is across from where our old office used to be. That was Deuce. That was Bounce. Or maybe, it was, but there was one in the Upper East too. Oh, 
Maybe that's maybe, maybe I, that's how old I am. I don't know. Back in my, my day, <laughs> bounce was on the upper east, and and you could get two beers for ten dollars. <laughs> for a nickel. For a nickel. For a nickel. <laughs> my bounce is in was in Flatiron, the one that I went to. I know that one, and there was the newer. It was yeah. it was nice. It was always like a party. It was a too. party. It was like a Sunday party. I would say, maybe I've said it here many times. Traveling here with a group of people, like I, I think a great you know, bachelorette bachelor party is including a Sunday fall in New York. There's also Love no that. bar that belongs to one team. That is something that is different from other cities that this city, this is a, Manhattan, New York transplant town. You get every game. Yeah. Um, so you don't walk into a bar and like wear your shirt and someone's like, boo, get out, you fucking yeah. loser. No, it's, it's like, like Boston. Yeah. Boston. <laughs> Not an inviting place to like have a good time watching your team. Yeah, I think my brother once got like jumped for wearing a Yankee jersey. Or yeah, something. That's not <laughs> on the even street, surprising. On the yeah. street, well, people on public say, street, <laughs> right? <laughs> people would say to me at home in Boston, "This is how sick Boston people." And I'll be coming there soon. Please get tickets to my show. We it's already the sold out, show. you guys. There's nothing you can do. Right, right, right. <laughs> you sickos. Um, they say to me all the time. They go, "Oh, do you wear like Boston stuff?" When you walk around New York. And I'm like, yeah, people here are um, trying to uh, make money. Like, <laughs> like people have bigger concerns. People don't what come to New York to for? worry about what team people are rooting for. Like, right. it is, you know, the, 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 to, and people ask you this in Boston all the time. Do you like, like, do you have to wear a Yankees hat? Yeah, they force me. They, <laughs> they fucking, you know. If anything, you wear a lot of Chicago um I am yeah. a uh, I'm a Bears uh, fan now. My brother works for the team now, so I have, oh I've, okay I've, that makes sense. So yeah, yes. family first. You know, I'm yes. like uh, Vince Vaughn. I'm like Vin Diesel in Fast and the Furious. Oh, I was gonna say I thought you were like Vince Vaughn in The Breakup, which that, is a great movie. Love that movie. And he's in Chicago, and he runs the Chicago like bus like boat tours. Do you know the story tour. of that movie? It actually relates to this podcast. No, let's hear it as I know it. I, I'm, I'm going the breakup. On, the breakup. This podcast. <laughs> so, so the story of the breakup, the movie. That movie was like in the height of like the Judd Apatow funny movie. Yeah. Vince Vaughn That's was a great the movie. Time. Great Still movie. Enjoy it. People hated it. So they did a test run, and it this. ends uh, with them breaking up. The whole movie is leading to them breaking up. You start with them meeting, and yes. then they the whole. It's called the breakup. And people hated it so much that they had to add that extra an, scene that, at the end where they give a little wink. Right. And that kind of ruins the movie for me. No, that was the best part of the movie was that at the end they broke up. Right. Yeah. It was it was but satisfying. It was, like, it was a it was not a contentious break. Towards the end, it was less contentious. Right. They made peace. They made peace, but it was it was a very real movie and it was almost too real for people. Yeah. Like the the test groups, so to speak. And Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn were dating and then they broke up. Really? So They actually dated? They dated. During, like, I think that's when they started dating when they were filming that movie and then they broke up after the movie. Vince Vaughn is probably number one guy I want to like hang with. I, you know, I, yeah. I don't really, you know, celebrity doesn't phase me. <laughs> Vince that, Vaughn, that, you would be phased by. I'd be phased. Well, Vince Vaughn, if you're, if you're listening, listening, you're welcome to come party. on the show. Love the breakup. Fan of your work. Are we ready? Let's do this email. Yeah. <laughs> let's, just do the, let's just do this email. We got an email from a guy. A, 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 a male listener yeah. with an issue. Um, oversharing the podcast. People should go check that out. Yeah. If you guys have a question, not dating related or dating related, long-term relationships, that kind of stuff, issue with family members, issue with your mother-in-law, we get a lot of those. Mother-in-law. We get so many mother in Everyone hates their mother-in-law. That's really what I've learned from doing this show. That is so funny because it is funny. <laughs> Men are not allowed to side with their moms at all. Not anymore. Not anymore. That ship no, it's gone. Because yes. I... I've mentioned like you know, new head bitch in charge of this family. That's now. right. <laughs> Better shut the fuck up, wrinkles. <laughs> this woman's in charge now. Yeah, they, it gets contentious. I, and I don't know. Maybe maybe women have trouble getting along. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe. Um, 
yeah, if you are interested in that kind of mother-in-law drama and other stuff, friendship <laughs> stuff too. The um, mother-in-law emails, so a lot of them. A lot of mother-in-law emails, a lot of people, a lot of friendship emails. We also have some issues with our friends. I was listening to the one with, uh, it, it, it was the friend breakup. Yes. And it's just so interesting how much care, how much you hold on to these friendships. I don't know. I've never even thought of a breakup with a friend. Because you would just probably both, I think there'd be less expectations. I think women yeah, have right. a lot more expectations of their female friendships. And that's expect probably, to be nurtured. Well, to go back to the mother-in-law thing, that's probably a part of that too. Like you're yeah. asked to do a lot for the mother-in-law. You're at, you're kind yeah. of expected to be Well, it's kind of working like who's, together. You think of the, I mean, again, in the traditional sense, you think of the mother and the mother of the family as sort of the CEO of the family. If you right. think about it, and not necessarily nowadays as much, but generally speaking, if you think of a traditional mm-hmm. family style, you think of the mom as the CEO. Mm-hmm. So it's like when your son marries someone else, another woman, it's like, okay, there's not going to be two CEOs. We're not going to co CEO no. this thing. Someone's <laughs> got to take the demotion. Right. You got to take a back seat. Right. Someone needs, because one person is usually making most of the family decisions, whether they know it or not. Right. Whether the other person knows it or not. <laughs> it's true. So I think it's an it's an interesting switch up. Absolutely. I'm loving it. I'm a fan. I'm yeah. an oversharing fan. It was. Uh, Thank it's, you. It's a I appreciate you listening. Show. Everyone go listen. Um, Check it out. I'm on the road, people. If you're listening right now, I'm in Buffalo tonight. Um, come on out. My last night in Buffalo. Just come. Just come. Coming to Detroit. Uh, can't wait to see everyone. Uh, as I talked about last <laughs> everyone, episode. Everyone. Everyone. Um, Especially people with your DNA. Yeah. Albany, Milwaukee, Mohegan, Baltimore, Richmond. Magoobies. And then Magoobies, Jordana's favorite club. And Boston, we've added a show. So yes. jaredfree.com, jaredfree.com. Theater. 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 I'm a theater act. You are a theater act. We are a theater act. We are a theater act. You're a theater act. Wilbur loves us and we love the Wilbur. And we love you. Subscribe to the YouTube page because channel, YouTube channel, because you can watch our live Chicago show. It's there for free. Other people will charge you for their live shows. Not us. Not us. We didn't want to have to go through taking out all the licensed music. (laughs) So you guys get it for free. (laughs) You can thank the lawyers at Sony BMG. Okay, okay, let's uh, let's get to the email. Let's do it. All right, Jared, Jordana, I'm a <coughs> new fan of the pod. Thank you for all that you do. I wanted to get your advice and what has become a common occurrence for me in the dating game and why I am clearly part of the problem of rising levels of lonely single men. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why the, the article is not believable. We're sitting here joshing about it. Lonely single men. <laughs> no one will go out with us. <laughs> Play that whenever you're, you're feeling Put that, it. Make that a gif. Yeah. I am an early 30 single guy living in NYC. I am recently back dating again after my now ex-girlfriend of two and a half years broke up and I broke up eight-ish months ago. Before that, I hadn't been in a serious relationship since high school and I constantly faced the same issue dating where I would see a girl for about one to two months and then eventually get the text breaking it off saying I was such a good guy, but they weren't feeling things romantically. Every situation was the same. We'd go on a bunch of dates, see each other about once a week. We'd hook up slash have sex multiple times. Uh, we'd text on and off during the week, etc., And then I'd get the same version of the same text. This has happened over five times over the years. And while I'm sure that may just be canned language people using to call something off it stuck out to me how it was always the same thing about not feeling things were romantic enough i've attached a screenshot of one of these texts but would appreciate it if you don't read it to the show god forbid this makes it on welcome you didn't write it to not make <laughs> it on. yeah <laughs> because i know she listens i want to demonstrate that these don't appear to be canned we should just be friends texts When I started dating my now ex-girlfriend, I thought maybe I had fixed whatever my problem was. But fast forward to today and two months ago, I started seeing a girl I really liked. And wouldn't you know it, after two months, I got that same text. 
In the two months we went on dates slash did things about once a week, we had sex multiple times, we hung out drunk and sober. My question is, what am I doing wrong that I constantly find myself in the friend zone after one to two months of seeing someone? Is there a common mistake people make that leads to successful starts of seeing someone, but common fizzling out, getting too comfortable, for example? My friends always tell me that I'm too nice and don't play the game enough, so girls may find the brewing relationship boring and tend to think of me as more of a friend. But can I really be too nice? Thanks in advance. A lonely single man, a.k.a. the 62% of dating apps. <laughs> it's such a male email to me because when women write in, they're like, here's the scenario. Yeah. And they give us like a beat by beat, everything that happened. This guy's just like, I'm having problems. People saying I'm too nice. Noticing and he gives, a, he's noticing a trend. Right. But never gives us like. Here's exactly, you know, it doesn't feel like we're lacking. You know, yeah. I, I understand I mean, what he's saying. I'm not. I think even the text that he sent, which we're not going to read. To me, we seemed, he was like, this isn't just a standard. We should just be friends text. To me, this read exactly as a standard. We should be friends text. It was the most no. <laughs> standard text. I totally agree. She she starts off the, the text complimenting him. Yeah. Um, and she just says they don't, she doesn't think that they're going to be a romantic match. Long term match romantically. Been fun. Respect what you're comfortable because may presents a friendship thought. Yeah, and if then he's into it. Enjoy the city. You know, it, to it, me that it, was the most standard right text. I it, it, it makes me question his kind of view on things. Yeah, well, I mean, here's the the thing that I I thought about this. A yeah, bit, um, because I think I, we've all gone on a date with someone that maybe in your mind it's like is it is it not romantic is it nice and i can see why the guy would say i'm being too nice girls like girls like guys that treat them like shit right right um i could see why you would tell yourself that but i don't think that's the case i think it's just these people aren't a ma- it's funny if a woman wrote this in you would just be like he dated you for three months he yeah. realized you weren't a match here's the difference though is that women don't keep having sex with you if they know they don't want to date you. That's the di- that's the only difference right. to me. So they cut it off even before you're ready to cut it off. Right. W- women don't make you break up with them. They right. break up with you because the sex isn't so, isn't, isn't, they're not, I think, and again, this is from my experience. Yeah. Maybe there's a woman out there who feels differently. But from my experience, if I don't want to date you and I've been dating you for three months, I don't really want to keep sleeping with you either. Right. Whereas I think men are much more open to that scenario. And to speak for a lot of men, sometimes they're just, they're not sure how much, I I think they have like a little bit of an ego problem, to to put it mildly. (laughs) And they're like, oh my God, it's going to like devastate her. Right. And maybe it would upset her more than it would upset the guy. I mean, I also think there's, if you're a guy who's getting really upset that someone's breaking up with you, it seems a little creepier. Right. Than a girl. And, and, but then, and that goes back to like the other side of it where you go, uh, he's a man, he'll brush it off. So it's it maybe even easier for you to go, oh, he, he wants to be on dating apps anyways. He wants to be fucking anyways. Like right. it's even easier for you to like get ahead of it because you don't think you're doing them this. You don't think of them as being as attached to you as you would be in the opposite scenario. Right. And and that Which in my case that I feel like that was usually the case. So when you've had this happen and yeah. the, the, the let's stick to the you're too you're a great guy. Yeah. When you said that to people, what was your what was your the most honest you could ever be? Be it right now with me. You're a great guy. The guy that you looked at and you were a great guy. What were you actually saying? I think I was actually saying I had a you're a great guy. Mm. I would I would truly believe that. Mm-hmm. I wish that I felt more attracted to you. Mm-hmm. She's saying romantic. To me, that's a little bit of like a sex thing a little bit. I wish I was a little bit more excited to see you before mm-hmm. a date that we were going to go on. And I wish I was a little bit more sexually attracted to you. Not that you are not sexually attractive. Mm-hmm. Because I've been out with a lot of guys who I think objectively were good looking. It Mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh, I wasn't, I didn't think they were attractive. It was just more like the sexual chemistry just didn't really feel that way. Can, and because I asked that and you hit on something, the the sexual chemistry part, Mm -hmm. because 
the most miserable person who listens to this podcast is going to go, she wasn't coming. You know, like something like I that. I don't think it's that. It's not that, but it's something, there is a combination missing. I think it's just like, oh, you sometimes you see someone and you just don't feel that lust. It's like a pheromone thing, but you might keep dating them and you even might keep sleeping with them for a little bit because you're kind of like, I got one. I think we've discussed this before right. on a previous uh, episode where you're like, I got one. It's great on paper, objectively attractive, right. a good guy, a nice guy. I should like this guy. The penis just, isn't weird. Yeah. Like, I, I know what I'm getting into. And you've probably felt that way about a lot of women that you've been Ab out with. Absolutely. Not that they're they're not unattractive. They're not, they don't have a bad personality. I would be fine to bring them home to my mom. Just right. something that I'm not feeling. I, everything is there. Yes. I'm just not there. I should be more there than I am. And you right. feel bad about it, actually. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, and is there something like, I don't even know if he could do anything to change that. I don't like the friends being like, should. be... Be the bad boy. No, because then you wouldn't be you. Right. And there are people. I mean, you had a relationship. You had a relationships for, for two and a half years. There are people who are attracted, um, will be attracted to you. It's not personal. It's this person didn't feel it. Right. And again, I just think it's men are always like, I was just, I was too nice or I'm too nice. This keeps happening to me. I keep getting dumb. It's like, if you want to, there's in, in the scenario where it's reversed, the woman also wants a relationship with both people. You want a relationship. You go out with the person. You date them for two or three months. And then you realize you're not into it. And again, I think the only real difference is that a woman will tell you right. much quicker than a man will. A man will make you break up with yourself much more often than a woman will. I totally agree. Yeah. We, we what do they call it? I just talked about this last night on stage. Um, silent quitting. Yeah. What do they? You just don't do it. You just don't. You just stop working. Quiet quitting. Right. You just you basically just, stop working. You stop and working. Wait for someone to fire you. Wait to be fired. Yeah. And that's what a lot of men do in their relationships. They quiet quit. Yeah. And this is not a quiet quit. This is a, I'm leaving. I need to go find a new job, but I'm going to like leave this company right. right now. And it's funny. I mean, I think about The Bachelor, which mm -hmm. I don't watch anymore, but I used to. And there's so many more women that who win the bachelorette who wind up marrying the man. Yes. Then there are men. I, I feel like very None of the rarely. Men work. It never works for the man. It always works for the woman. You know who it or worked not for? not always, but it, it, it does. That's the only time it does work. It worked for Sean Lowe. And it worked for Sean Lowe because he was like a born again virgin. Mm -hmm. And he was not just in it for the sex. They didn't even have sex mm -hmm. until they got married. And so I think he was think he was coming at it thinking about it in a very different way well, than a lot even, of the other. And, and sex isn't even on your mind, right? I, I, the, in it for the sex, I don't think the like. I don't that, believe oh, I'm that gonna the, I'm gonna propose to the woman I want to have sex with the most, right? But <laughs> but it, 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 I think it guides your behavior differently. Yeah, that goes back to the loneliness of men. It's a distraction, right? You know, these dating apps are a distraction because you're thinking about sex and. You know, you go down. You, uh, yeah. That's a part of your decision making, and maybe that doesn't help you at all. Yeah. And I do think if a woman has decided that she's not into you mm. romantically anymore, she has no desire to have sex with you. I've never right. wanted, once I've made that decision about a guy in my head, and sometimes I'll give it a little more time, but once I've decided I'm just not feeling the sexual lustiness that is exciting for me, yeah. I don't want to sleep with them. Yeah, so you don't even let it go vague. Right. Like, and yeah, I and I think for this guy, it might be too... What do you think of the idea he's out of a two and a half year relationship and now these people are coming at him with these like, I think he's dating like he's in a relationship. That's he's possible. And he's doing nice dates. Right. But and some people will appreciate that. Of course. But that's what makes people write you these texts even more. Yeah. Is they go, I can't go on the, he's taking me out to right. dinner. And I feel bad. Do, feel bad. Women never, men never feel bad. Well, they're you, never like... <laughs> Never, she came over late at night, right? You know, and I just, I can't. I, I feel bad. <laughs> then never. It's like it is a, it it's, is a difference in. And I you know another thing about the Bachelorette, which I noticed when I used to watch, was um, the women when they got down to the final two, they would never make the guy come up there and they dump them um, with when they. Pro Propose. They always they would, go to the room. They would go before. first and They'd get it done. They go to the with. room and they like privately because they want to save them the embarrassment. The men's are the men are men. Let them come up there and think they're getting come engaged on. in the big dress. <laughs> and they're like, "I've had such a great time with you." Right. However, yeah, 
I'm just, I do think there's a, that we are, maybe also because, I mean, to bring it back to Wednesday's episode, we are a little bit more in tune emotionally. We do feel more comfortable talking about our feelings. We know, we we know and are open about the fact that these things hurt a lot. Right. So maybe that's another part of it. Yeah. And we generally, you, you dump someone in the way you want to be dumped. Right. You know, so like this text, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah, this is a great, it's extremely, a gr- I've sent this text. <laughs> it's a really good text. And and the sucky part about this email that he's sending is like, our, you know, like it sounds like what we're saying is like, keep going. This yeah. is going to happen. Um, someone's going to be into it. Someone's going to be into it. I, I can't tell you the potion to make it so it works with this woman. Right. But it will work with someone. And, yeah. you know, maybe, you know, just understand that, be okay with that you're like, relationship dating is something that I think is brought on by the apps as well too. Like, I think the idea of this guy, like what's he going to do? Like his friends are telling him to play the game or what's he going to do? Go to a bar Ignore in a leather people. jacket, <laughs> sit in the corner, smoking a it's cig. Like Sandy from, uh, right. from Greece. Right. He, he's not going to be Sandy. Right. He's going to go and he's going to ask her on a date and he's going to go and say, let's do, you know, uh, brunch this week. And he's going to do all the yeah. things that he feels comfortable doing because he's 32 and he's a and regular girls guy. girls in their 30s like that. Yeah, he'll be and okay. And again, it's kind of the same thing you would tell any woman. It's not personal. Just weren't a match for them. Right. They just weren't buying what you were selling. And like some, and sometimes one person realizes that first. Yeah. And your dick's small. That's it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. It's a strong medium, I'm sure. Probably. It, it sucks to be like nothing you can do. <laughs> like, I mean, isn't that what we tell right, every woman everyone. who has the guy? But in that case, it's she's kind of she has to be yelling, just extracting the breakup out from of him. the guy. And where do you see us go? Like she has to she has to do the reveal in order to get dumped. Whereas right. More again, I just think women are a lot more proactive. And again, they're getting less out of it once they've decided that they don't want to be in a relationship with you. Right. And uh, yeah. And there's no like, will they, won't they? Uh, oh, meet up with me. I'll be out. Yeah. No, I, if I work. don't want to date you, I don't want you to meet me out. I right. want to meet someone else that I do want to date out. So you're going to get a text like this. <laughs> I, like, yeah. We can be friends. <laughs> yeah. I had a thing. I remember I was seeing some guy and I didn't want to invite him to my birthday. Mm. But I was like, I can't just not invite him to my. I was like, I don't want to see. I don't really want to like to spend time hanging out with him on my birthday. Like I had a thing at a bar. And so I called him to break up with him because I was like, I can't just not invite him to my birthday. Beware (laughs) of birthdays, season changes, vacations, all of it, global pandemics. Yeah. The birth, because the birthday is a, an admission of, Oh man, if I don't want him here. Yeah. If I don't want you at my birthday, if I'd rather not spend ta- spend the night talking to you at my birthday, I don't want to see you ever again. Right. So I might as well get this call out of the way. Right. But then I also don't, I don't want you to feel, I don't want me to post a story at my birthday. And I, I think women just are aware that men might feel bad. Right. And a guy would go, <laughs> hey, I'll be out later after my birthday and have you as an option right. to meet up with in case all else fails on his birthday. Yes. Which I, I again, that <laughs> It didn't feel great to say, well, but it's, I, the, it's, I it's think the icky reality. That's why it feels, I mean, that's why it, sometimes it feels like we give a lot more than we get. Fair. I, I'm, I'm not here to, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I think we helped this guy. I think so too. Keep doing what you're doing. Eventually Keep, someone you'll be a match for. I'll see a bounce, man. We'll have a drink together. Yeah. We'll go and bring try your, and meet women. Bring your leather jacket and your cigarette. Bring your LJ. And your Better Shape Up <laughs> musical rendition of the song. Better Shape Up. Because I need, need a man. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> like there sometimes I can only hear the tune. <laughs> 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 that was that, that movie actually sends a terrible message. What's the message? The message is like Sandy needs to like stop being so nice and like she starts smoking cigarettes so that John Travolta will like her. R.I.P. Recently, Olivia Newton John. Oh, I thought John Travolta died. No, Olivia Newton John. <laughs> but and at the end of the movie, they're like she yeah. like decides she like gets a little more edgy, right? And then they like sail off into the sunset. Yeah, I message. guess the message is if you change yourself. Men will be into you. I'll like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Maybe you'll get the guy. <laughs> Start smoking. Maybe. How, this has been online all the time, but 
how old they look for being in high school oh God, is like 17. crazy. Yeah. So the woman who played Rizzo in Greece, Stalker, Stalker, what was her name? Stalker Channing, when they filmed it, she was actually 33 years old. That's, so she's my age. Well, I'm looking at a picture of the T Birds. Look at this guy. Yeah. That's an old man. Not 17. Even John Travolta <laughs> looks old. Right. That was the thing about like Saved by the Bell that always bothered me. Like I'm sitting there in high school, chubby McChubster, and I'm looking at fucking AC Slater being like, what happened to me? Like yeah. that that's like one of those things like on TV, it should only be allowed to be like played by high school kids. Yeah, it's deceptive. It's deceptive. Uh, talk about body shaming. You can't be looking like that. And spend the women too. The women too. They're Everyone. Also beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's our. It's our take on, on a, Greece and pop culture <laughs> and changing yourself for men. Cancel Saved by the Bell. <laughs> so. That ship has sailed. Yeah. Well, we solved dating again. We did it. We we'll did be, it. We'll be back on Wednesday. Subscribe to the YouTube channel betches.co slash YouTube. Get involved. You can look at us right now. Hi. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> the U Up podcast is produced by Sean Kilby, Maddie Paul, and Jorge Morales Pico. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico. Social media by Maddie Paul. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. <laughs>